Good afternoon, Santa Clarita, and everyone else streaming around the world. I'm your host on the Senior Hour today. I'm filling in for Barbara and Jean. My name is Alex Urbina, and we have a special guest joining us in studio today. His name is Caden Elder of the Caden Elder Law Group. Caden, thanks for taking the time and hanging out with me today. Well, it's my pleasure. Actually, it's it's Randall Caden. I'm uh, sorry. I appreciate it. No, no, no worries. Okay. I figure a lot of people... Uh, are using my last name as a first name these days and so people get confused but uh, you know when I was growing up nobody was named Caden <laughs> but uh, apparently uh, people have picked up on it and they like the name. So tell me a little bit about what you do and your contribution to the community. One of the things I loved about your website, I love your tagline, your life, your legacy, your way. I really love that. Uh, I'm glad tell you me picked a little, up on Tell that. me a little bit about what that means and how you guys really help the, our community. Sure. So our motto, our mantra is that we want seniors to live the life that they want to live and not a life that uh, somebody is telling them that they need to live or, or how they have to live because maybe they have certain ailments or uh, difficulties living in the environment. So we know statistically that 93 to 94 percent of Americans, if they had their druthers, they would like to remain at home. And even beyond that, uh, we are looking at other possibilities uh, in elder law, how we can fund such things as independent living, assisted living, uh, skilled nursing, board and care facilities. So what we're really doing most of the time is we're creating asset protection trusts so that we can qualify veterans and certain vulnerable seniors for government benefits so that they can uh, not go bankrupt, they can age uh, with dignity and uh, not have to rely on their loved ones to take care of them and uh, you know they have the freedom to make their own choices essentially and that's that really encompasses a lot with you know uh, your life, your legacy, your way. We want it to be your way, not the system's way, not how someone else is telling you how to do it, but exactly what it is that you want. Now, what I love about when you say, I want you to live your life the way that you want to live it, the first thing that comes to my mind is you would have to be proactive and you would have to educate yourself and you'd have to be an advocate for yourself to set yourself up to, to live in a way that you want to live. You can't be like unaware, unconscious, and then last minute when all of a sudden your health goes a whack, now all of a sudden you, because you didn't set yourself up and weren't proactive, now you can't really live the way that you want because you didn't do the, the work on the front end rather than the back end. I think that that's true, and unfortunately, it's it's most often the case. Uh, most people think that they have a living trust, they've got Social Security, they've got Medicare, and they're completely covered. But that's simply not the case. Uh, Long-term care is not covered by the government. Now, Medicare may pay for the first 20 days after you have a three-day hospital stay, and they might, on a rare occasion, pay for por a portion of the next 80 days, but it's pretty rare. And and the cost of care is so high that uh, it's it's really not tenable for most people. Some people were smart enough to get long-term care insurance, and so that definitely helps. Uh, we know that 20% of the population are uh, veterans who served during a time of war, and with uh, veterans, we can get them aid and attendance pension benefits. This year, uh, a married veteran can get $2,120. Uh, a widow of a veteran can get $1,149. And uh, just a single veteran can get 1788 per month uh, to help pay for their activities of daily living. And that is an amazing thing that most people don't realize. And it helps to really stretch out one's resources so that they can age in dignity for a very long period of time. Now, when you say that there's certain things that people don't realize... The first thing that comes to my mind is the reason why they don't realize it is because they're not being coached or mentored by a professional like you that's committed to help people understand those things and learn those programs. And you've dedicated your life and to this special niche to so serve and support those types of people. How do you get people to reach out and ask for help? Because I think that seems to be the hardest part is getting people to not think that they have to do it themselves. Because I think that's what most people do is they have an elderly parent at home and they start panicking and they get on the internet and they try to research and do the best they can. But there's someone right here in our community that you can actually go to with all the experience, all the wisdom, and can kind of walk them through through this process. Yeah, so really that's, that's such a great, great question. Um, 
you know, most people don't realize when we're talking about estate planning, uh, e even estate planning attorneys, frankly, they pull me aside sometimes and they ask me, what is it that you guys do again? Elder law as a profession has really come into its own in the last, let's say, 10 or 15 years. You know, we have 10,000 seniors a day, uh, 10,000 people a day, rather, tur uh, turning 65, and this is going to continue for many, many years. And again, most people, they have done some kind of estate planning, and estate planning really only addresses the question, what happens when I die, or what happens when I become incapacitated? And don't get me wrong, that's a very important question to ask and answer. However, what is sort of overshadowing that question for, for us is the elder law issues of what happens if I live? That's what I was thinking. As soon as you said what yeah. happens when you die, the first thing that came to my mind is what happens if you don't die? Right, exactly correct. And, you know, when I started out 20 years ago and everything was, uh, all the trust-based planning was tax-based. And so we all had our master's in tax and we were doing a lot of AB or ABC complicated trust tax planning, especially in California. Uh, but, you know, the estate tax exemption has gotten larger and larger and larger every year. So at this point, essentially a married couple can give away $11 million, 100% tax-free. Uh, most people have less than $11 million, obviously. And so it's not really a concern anymore for most people. Although there are a lot of people out there walking around with old trusts that are much more complicated than they need to be and will actually cost them a lot more in legal and accounting fees after the death of the first spouse. And it will also, uh, you know, it doesn't apply what I call, you know, KISS theory, keep it simple. And uh, I think that that's really important for people is to, to keep it simple. Now, when we're talking about uh, living the life that people want to live, you know, medicine keeps getting better. We have this blessing that we're, we're living longer and we're living better, but we have this question, how are we going to pay for that care? And we know that uh, at home, maybe the cost of care is 20 to $25 an hour. But if we're moving into this middle area, we can't live at home anymore. We're from somewhere between uh, independent living and, and assisted living, memory care. That's three to $7,000 a month on average. And on the other end of the spectrum is skilled nursing care at $10,000 a month on average. And, and the costs keep continually going up. They're, they're outpacing inflation. So it's, it's really an amazing thing and something that people should not be sticking their head in the sand and not thinking about it because it... it for the majority of people out there, they will live and they will have to address these questions at some point and it perhaps will be too late at that point. I think it's important to at least, even if we brush on the topic about sticking your head in the sand, I think it's important to at least point that out because we could be doing that unconsciously and not even aware that we're avoiding it or don't want to look at it. It's the same thing as the reference putting your head or burying your head in the sand. It's, I don't, I'm afraid of it. We have all these fears that come up. So when I think about some of the fears that would come up, if I were to come to you with a list of fears and I, and I sought you out to be my consultant and be my attorney and kind of educate me, and I came to you with all my fears and said, look, this Randall, these are all my fears. And I'm just going to throw them out there. Are you that welcoming that you embrace the fears? Because those are the things I'm sure that you want to help kind of shift and course correct so that they, you can educate them so that those fears kind of dissolve. Yeah, actually, those are the things that we hear almost on a daily basis are all the fears. And sometimes they're they're spoken and sometimes they're unspoken fears. Uh, but you you can delve into it with each family and what's going on particular with their with them and what are they worried about and helping to address all of those concerns as they uh, as they age I can think of one fear right now as I'm talking to you that could possibly stop people from at least reaching out and raising their hand saying hey I need help or I could use your help and that would be the fear of how much people think it costs yeah. to come to somebody like you to ask for your help because in our mind if we don't have experience of ever having an attorney s support us or be there for us yeah. we can make up all these outrageous stories about what the cost might be yeah. is that something that's common so, that in that you deal with yeah so we get questions every week again people calling up and asking how much is this and how much is that but our philosophy is to never charge anyone until we've explained to them exactly what it is that we're going to do for them and exactly how much that's going to cost 
cost. So actually, we have initial consultations for free. So there's really no reason that anyone should not come in and see us. Now, the, right off the bat, when you get a free consultation, it's, that tells me that your job is to point out where all the value is on paper so that I can see the value. If I can see the value and it's big enough, and then I'm comparing that versus your fee, that's a no-brainer, right? I mean, it's like any professional that you go to, you sit down, have a free consultation, and it's their job to show you what the value is. Like, this is what I'm committing to do for you. This is the answers that I can bring to you. And then on paper, at least you owe that to yourself and you owe it to your aging parents to sit down and at least get a free consultation. Absolutely. And, and I would add to that, especially in the veterans pension benefit context, uh, most veterans are not aware that there's this, what I call a second social security out there for them to get. And uh, they'll go decades without ever having tapped into this. They might even call the Veterans Administration and ask them if they qualify and they constantly get told that they don't qualify. But that just means that they haven't come or they haven't seen a, an elder law attorney well versed in this area because, you know, knock on wood, our success ratio is 100% success. We get wow. people qualified. So if you think about it, if I'm telling you that, you know, given the right scenario, I'm going to get you an extra $2,120 per month. If my legal fee is even $20,000, Essentially, what I'm saying to you is in 10 months, you've made all the money back and then some and then going forward. So uh, in that respect, when I think about the veterans benefits, is it's an absolute no brainer. Now, when we're in an emergency context and somebody has gone into the hospital, maybe they broke a hip, had a stroke, a heart attack, any a number of things that that hit people and they're faced with paying skilled nursing care, $10,000 a month, and we can do planning that will have Medi-Cal come in and pay that entire cost for them, uh, again, it's it's kind of a no-brainer in that emergency context. But what the, the caveat there that everybody should be aware of is that both the Medi-Cal laws and the uh, veterans laws are slated to change this year, I mean this coming year, 2017. And so it's going to be much harder to qualify for those things. And the people who are on top of this, uh, they're kind of coming in in droves, I would say, in the last six months saying, let's set up uh, the Asset Protection Trust, let's do the planning now so that if the laws don't apply retroactively, which they generally don't, uh, we're qualified going forward. But once the new laws go into effect, there could be penalty periods, for example, for like under the new veterans proposed laws, it could go back for 10 years. So imagine you want to transfer assets into an asset protection trust, and that's going to disqualify you from getting a $2,000 a month benefit for the next 10 years. That's a big deal. So to do the planning uh, sooner when you're not in an emergency context rather than later, especially in the state of California, because we're the only state that hasn't implemented the Deficit Reduction Act when it comes to Medicaid and Medi-Cal, uh, is really just so very important. Now, when I hear you flat out explain it and talk about this information that's a no-brainer, that no-brainer information has to be seen and experienced inside of a free consultation. You have to first raise your hand and say and decide I need help. I need someone else to show me that has the wisdom and the experience so they can explain it to me all on paper so that I can see the no-brainer information. Prior to that, before you can even realize what kind of benefits, you have to go to somebody like you to at least be educated and being explained all that. Yeah, it's another good point and I would uh, just add to that for our business is probably about 80% of our business is redoing uh, other people's estate plans. Now the estate plan, not that it was uh, flawed to begin with, it might have been a good estate plan and it does address those questions of what happens if I pass away or I become incapacitated, but it doesn't address the, the world of other issues that are really people are dealing with um, year in and year out. And so, is that because of the, the when they at the time that they created those estate plans, the world evolved and shifted, and new laws came in a pass? Is it is it almost like an ongoing thing? You have to revisit every five years or yes. so. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, a trust is a living, breathing thing. A lot of people believe that a trust, and especially powers of attorney, surprisingly, um, they need to be revisited very frequently. Um, 
a lot of people could probably um, tell horror stories of how they went to the bank and their their financial power of attorney didn't work, or they were at the hospital and their healthcare directive didn't work, and this can lead to all sorts of problems, of course. And so you don't want to really be lackadaisical about it. You want to revisit it, especially if it's uh, you know you can go in and get a, a free consultation. Um, now, also the laws have changed; they're constantly changing, especially in the elder law arena. And even if we're just talking about estate planning, there are certain things like uh, one of the topics we wanted to talk about today was the retirement trust. And for for example, 10 years ago, uh, conduit provisions in living trust, you never saw them. They didn't exist. Um, so in other words, you couldn't really leave a retirement plan to a living trust because that would trigger uh, the five-year rule, which means that they, people would have to take uh, out the monies and pay lots of taxes. That's not no longer the case as long as you have a modern trust that has conduit provisions in it. Or perhaps you want to take out a reverse mortgage. Well, you need to have the clauses in the trust for a reverse mortgage. You know, 20 years ago, it didn't exist. Um, the list kind of goes on and on and in an estate planning context alone for people to revisit the these issues. But then again, when we're talking about people who are getting to be, let's say, 70 and above, uh, the elder law concerns, in my opinion, completely overshadow the estate planning concerns because, again, we want people to live the life that they want to live. We want to intelligently look at a person's assets and their maladies, and we actually do about a 30 to 40 page analysis trying to figure out exactly what they're going to need going in the future and how they can achieve that based on the assets they ha that they have and the cards that they've been dealt and uh, the benefits that are out there so that we can stretch out their resources and help them to live exactly the way that they want to live. Yeah, and I think that most people go bury their head in the sand because, or at least get an, an original state plan set up 20 years ago, and once they tell themselves they've done it, it's almost like I want to just now forget about it and just trust that it's going to do its thing when it's, when it's time for me to need it. But what you're saying is that, no, we got to keep revisiting it and keep re-altering it, keep reinventing it so that it sets us up to win at the time that we need it. We're going to take a short break. When we come back from the break, you're going to help us understand a little bit more about the IRA Retirement Trust, speak a little more in sure. detail about that. And then if you have any questions or want to call in, call us at 661-298-5487. Again, that's 298-5487, 298-KHTS. You're listening to the Senior Hour. I'm your host, Alex Rabina, right here on the AM, uh, AM 1220 KHTS.